Now, after Wofford, you went to the University of Richmond and you worked in the, in the compliance office there. Yeah. First, can you tell people what the role is of a compliance office? Because everyone that's watching this wants to go play in college and every college has a compliance office. So we can do a little compliance 101 here and explain yeah. what that is and what you did when you were at Richmond. So before the University of Richmond, I had um, I got my master's degree at Virginia Commonwealth University uh, in their sports um, leadership program. And I then went to the University of Richmond um, and worked in compliance under Daniel McCarthy, who's now at South Alabama. Great guy as well, like super knowledgeable. Um, and so at the time, I'm, the eligibility center didn't exist, the NCA eligibility center. So or they were just getting ready. They were in the development stage. And so we were doing all of the like processing of transcripts, like evaluating international prospective student athletes, domestic student athletes, um, making sure that all of the coaches were in compliance with all of the legislation. Um, the NCAA has um, manuals for division one, two, and three, and they really do read like a law manual. Um, and they're very, very thick and <laughs> there's a lot of rules. Um, so just being the overarching kind of guide, um, for the coaches, like making sure everybody is following what they're supposed to be following, turning in all the forms that they're supposed to be turning in, um, doing a lot of education. Um, so as the rules change and are kind of modified and in, in going through an, a, a different type of evolution, making sure that the coaches understand, okay, this is how it was last year, but then this is now changed and this is what we're going to have to kind of pivot towards. Um, and this is what you're going to have to do now. Uh, also at the time, um, they, uh, st if students wanted to transfer to another institution, they had to have the coach's permission, um, to transfer. And so that was pretty interesting. Um, and the, uh, sometimes the coaches would let them transfer to another institution in the conference um, or maybe a rival school that's not necessarily in their conference. So kind of working through all of that um, was definitely eye-opening. Um, that was my first real job, like in college athletics. Like obviously I'd gone to graduate school and, and um, you know, learned about everything, but actually putting, you know, actually being on the ground and doing it day by day um, was a completely different thing. And I think that a lot of the compliance staff do, don't get the credit they deserve because it's it's so complicated. It's so hard. Um, it's a, it can be a thankless job, but um, like I admire everybody who's in compliance because it's just such, you have to have such a wealth of knowledge in so many different areas. And that's why you'll see some of the bigger institutions have um, have numerous compliance staff because you need to. Um, and one may have football oversight, one may have basketball oversight, one may just do initial eligibility and that's all they do. One may do continuing eligibility. Um, one may work with the registrar and in mission. So it's, it definitely, there's a lot of cogs in the wheel to make it work.